have an incomplete circle. If we have an incomplete circle, we have exactly what we're doing today. We're chemical farming, you know? And, and even farmers that, that do fertilizer know, they know that they're killing the land, but they can't stop. They don't know how to stop. They don't know how to quit doing what they're doing. Okay, in the landscape, in a world where we're losing forest species and whole ecosystems, there are three concurrent and parallel responses to the environment. One is care for surviving natural assemblies. In other words, let's just stop now. Leave the wilderness to heal itself. The wilderness will heal itself. And we know full well what happens. Out here on the outskirts of town, house burns down, nobody buys the property, what happens? Grows up, grows up in trees. Several years pass, and you can't even tell that there was anything out there. So, so nature's going to heal itself if it's just left to do it. If we want to do that and help it along, then, then that's part of the concept we're looking at at community gardens. We were at a community garden uh, this morning doing work. What, what was the name of it? East. East, East, uh, East, Central. East Central Community Gardens, yeah. Um, really, really neat little place. They took over where a house had burned down. There's a nice little sidewalk going down through part of it. Um, and they're, yeah, y'all come on in and sit down. Um, and, they, and they've taken it over. It's a, it's a bunch of little old ladies that are gardening, and, and they are not able to do the heavy work themselves. So um, they're not only doing container gardeners. Everybody know what container gardening is? Yeah. Well, they, they have a really neat, if you ever get a chance, go by and look at it. They have two containers joined by a little short bench. And you can sit, <laughs> which, that's a pretty neat thing. Now, we built one over at the Sock Tea restaurant, and um, we used old tile boxes, uh, filled in the sides, filled them in with dirt, and you could actually sit on the side of that box. Um, and there was enough room in between all of them for everybody to do it. And then permaculture in the landscape. Um, if we rehabilitate degraded or eroded land using a complex pioneer species and long-term plant assemblies, that's trees, shrubs, and ground covers, we can reclaim land just like this. And this is of the rainforest there in, in uh, Bolivia and Brazil um, where they're cutting down rainforest. And, and they're essentially doing the same thing that we did 120 years ago. Cut the forest down, plow it up. When it's used up, they move on. Well, in the meantime, what happens? This is a prime example of that. Look at this gully that is forming. And I thought this was this is one of the old masters uh, paintings of actually, uh, if you look way in the back there, you can see the ark. It's of uh, Noah gathering for the ark, but it's all, uh, all the species. And if we create our own complex living environment with many species that we can save or have need for from wherever on earth they come. And, you know, yes, we have some invasive species in Texas. Um, we even have, now we have alligators in Fort Worth, if you can believe that. I wouldn't have ever believed it. But it's, they're actually a, considered a pest. So somebody has either turned them loose or they swam up to Brazos. Um, another example of that is in Oklahoma, there's a lake that you can't swim or water ski in because it has piranha. Now, who would have believed that, that in Oklahoma, where the ice is two feet thick, that piranha could survive. But on the other hand, um, we have some other species that have done really quite well. Uh, we imported a lot of those. Um, that's, that's another way of looking at it. Uh, we killed the buffalo off. Um, those are coming back in selected areas. Uh, but buffalo need an, a large area to roam, and we don't have that anymore. Everybody's fenced off all their land. So we have to do with what we've got. We have two responsibilities. Primarily is get our house and garden, our place of living in order so it supports us. Now if you'll look at this, this is actually taken from a permaculture design, from the permaculture design course. And this was a lady's house and her drive. And what she did was design everything in this where it would be a forest garden and, and have the least amount of tilling and the least amount uh, preparation. So these plants come back year after year, or she's simply moving other uh, smaller plants aside and putting a seed underneath it. Um, so uh, during the during the course, if you decide to take the course, um, you will be shown a lot of these 
different designs and uh, you can create your own either on your own place or um, you know we can use the center here as a uh, design module. Secondary is to limit our population on earth or we ourselves are going to become the final plague. Now you remember what was it uh, six years ago and um, the population on earth doubled and I understand it doubled again. So every four to six years unless something happens and I think it's fixing to we um, are going to double the population on Earth. Well, the question is, is how much, how much food can we produce? Yeah. So far, we're doing fair. There's places that don't have food. Somalia, well, you know, that's going to be a tough one. You may want to go to Somalia and do permaculture design. That'd be it. So, permaculture is a philosophy and not a religion. We don't get into religion, and it, it's just a way of doing things. Permaculture is a toolbox, it's not a set of plans or a blueprint, and we do what works. Occasionally we make mistakes. Occasionally you'll put a plan in and you'll go, man, that just does not work. Well, so you made a mistake, jerk it out, stick something else in. Um, if you make a mistake, you need to fix it. You know, if, you, uh, if your design uh, of, say, a water catching swale doesn't work, blows water out the end on your neighbor, there's a simple way to fix it. And, just fix it. You know, not everybody's perfect. Tell others what works, um, and tell others uh, when something doesn't work. If you make a mistake, say, hey, look, you know, man, I thought this was really going to work. It didn't. So that way people don't walk down the same path that you are. So this is the beginning and not the end. <laughs> That's a, actually a picture of one of my donkeys. Okay, um, what we're going to do is... Um, I'm going to uh, do a real short slide through on aquaponics, and we have an aquaponics unit out here. Um, we are, what, what time is it? I have three twenty. It is really. It's, it's really big. picking up and growing. You know, it, it's it's been slow in the past years, and it depends on which part of the United States and Austin. There's a huge movement. They've been teaching permaculture for 15 years, you know, and having the course every year, and you can see where it's making changes in the city. San Antonio, there's not that many people that, that know what the term permaculture is yet, so it's it, it's not moving as fast yet. So let me tell you some of the things you can do with permaculture. If you take the course and you successfully complete it, and you get your design certificate, you can you are actually qualified. You can take that diploma. You're actually qualified to go up in front of the city and say, look, you know, you've got some projects coming up. You're going to be doing, um, let's say, I call them yuppie bumps, the, the center islands. And, and I'd like to design something in there that is permanent, uh, that doesn't need uh, water or a whole lot of water. Um, and you are perfectly qualified, and the cities actually recognize that. If you want to uh, go to the state, that's the same thing. Now, that doesn't make you an architect, and it doesn't make you a landscape um, artist, but but you are actually qualified with that to do permaculture design. So, so there's a plus. Um, Gloria and I are both um, double diplomies of the permaculture design course. We just finished up a course, which was a little strange because not only were we taking our second permaculture design course from a completely different person, but we also taught five classes at that. And we, prior to that, have graduated from the um, permaculture teachers intensive course. Um, this year it was held in Arcosante. Is anybody familiar with Arcosante? Mm -hmm. um, strange place. <laughs> strange guy. But it, it is really neat. It, it, for you, though, those of you who are who are not aware, it was a community built on the edge of a plateau on top of basalt. Um, and they have, I think, a hundred and some odd acres. They built this thing out of concrete and they're using solar gain and solar um, type designs in it. Um, they've been going for about 25 years, I think, and they're probably really just getting into the 
to the media, but I think they have like a hundred. They have a hundred permanent residents. And that's some of the other things that are covered in the permaculture course: is building types and styles, and placement, and trees and plants, and how to place them in your area in order to create the most benefit. So, and we talk about solar. We've added aquaponics.